Good morning, everybody. I am Meg from Love and Stamps, and this is Maker Mornings with Meg Thursday edition. So happy pre-Friday, everyone. Today's card is a fiesta. It's just a party because you know that I love a pun and I cannot resist them. So when I saw the Taco Fiesta stamp set in the catalog, let's get that to focus there. Um, I just right away had to add it to my collection. So we're going to do some punny cards today. Um, I'm actually going to show you two cards because once you make the first one, you might as well make the second one. Uh, and you'll understand why when we get to that part. And then we are also going to uh, do some focus on Stampin' Blends markers. And we're going to do a really fun technique called the floating strip technique which I absolutely love. It is just so clever and relatively easy to do. Um, it's not really, not too fussy at all, but I do have some really important tips to share. Um, and they might be some tips that are different from things you've heard before. So it's my take on um, some of those details on that technique, but uh, it uses window sheets, it uses strips. It's really like 3D in the end. It's a really cool technique. So I think you're gonna love it. So with that, let us go ahead and get started. Hey, Tanya and Elaine and Becky and everybody else, make sure you say hi. Um, we're gonna switch cameras here, yoink, and get this party started. All right, so talk of Fiesta right there. Um, there are a few things in this project that are sort of like an order um, of arrangement kind of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start um, and then set some things aside so that they um, are ready. So when you're when you're doing this project, um, you might consider the order that you're doing the pieces uh, and, and if you need to let some stage sit for, you know, five, 10 minutes or something. Uh, so right here, I have a square of window sheet and you can see the, there's my camera reflection, hello. <laughs> um, it is three inches by three inches, but you could do any size that works for your card layout. And I realize it's hard for you to see. Oh, not as hard as I thought. Um, but I have set this on a piece of grid paper. And the reason is that I find it much easier to get these things straight um, when I can see the grid through. So use your grid, have it together. Hey, Vonda and Sue and Terry and Margie. Um, so use your grid. All right, now the next thing, this is my, my the very first departure here um, from the, the other tips that I've heard. Um, I've heard people say not to use the liquid glue, but you know what? My strips are um, a quarter of an inch, so I took a half inch strip and used my trimmer to trim it down. Um, these scraps are basically like the trash scraps that are in the bottom of my cardstock file, so um, this is a great way to use up scraps but you can really easily cut these in half with your Stampin' Up! trimmer. And so they're too narrow for my regular adhesives. So I know that you guys are gonna be totally fine on this. I'm gonna give you my multi-purpose liquid glue tips so that you will, um, you'll have the ability to do this too. So, and you're gonna, you're gonna hear my tips when you're making your card, I can tell you now. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting some of these ready. You don't have to get them all ready at the beginning. Um, but they're a little bit longer than three inches. And first tip of the liquid glue, always tap, okay? What that's doing is it's putting the glue down into the tip. If I do it this way, if I, if I leave my glue to sit up like this, what that's doing is putting a big air bubble at the top and then when I flip it to start using, this glue is really thick and it's gonna splurge out in unpredictable ways. So do yourself a favor, always like in the habit of tap, tap, tapping here. Um, I do it without even thinking about it. <laughs> so see if you can get it to that point too. Uh, so once you tap it, then don't set it down again. So I'm gonna take the lid off, sometimes I'll tap it again, and then I'm going to start gluing. Now, this is the part where you're gonna hear me um, when you're doing your project. You're gonna hear me say, if you can see it, it is enough, okay? Repeat after me. If you can see it, it is enough. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what I'm talking about. And okay, so that dot right there, that is like too much glue, okay? See how little that is? That's too much. <laughs> if you can see it, it is enough. So you want to just barely be able to see the glue like this. You see how little glue that is? Even that is kind of a lot. Um, and I will tell you, your control with this glue will improve the more you use it. Um, and your control will improve if you um, use kind of my tip practices. So remember, tap it down. Um, if you're tapping, oops, sorry, I'm off the screen here. 
if you're tapping and you're let, leaving glue behind, um, you might consider uh, going ahead and switching your glue bottle or tapping a little bit less. Just know that when you first get your glue um, and open it, it's going to um, be a, a pretty juicy, so it's gonna come out pretty fast and you'll kind of get a feel for that. So, All right, and then I'm gonna start gluing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop my strips across here and you can see that I am keeping them um, straight. I am not like overly pressing. That's my multi-purpose liquid glue tip number two. I'm not like taking my finger and going right across there. I didn't actually touch it. That was just for show. Um, because you don't wanna squish the glue out from the edges. The glue will um, leave a mark on the um, window sheet that will stay sticky even after it dries. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you keep um, keep that glue uh, under the paper, don't squish it out. It's gonna take a little longer to dry than usual um, because you're gluing onto plastic, which is a non-porous surface, um, but it will dry. So you can see, uh, since I have my grid paper set up here, it's really easy to make sure I'm continuing straight. Um, hey, Kathy and Annie. Uh, continuing straight as I go, okay? And there we go. I can kind of gauge how far apart I'm keeping them and I'm continuing my pattern. So colors for this are Daffodil Delight, Poppy Parade, and uh, Parakeet Party. And that is um, a fun sort of a theme for our project here. So, oh, there's a really good example. See, if you can see it, it's enough. This one, this yellow strip has kind of a lot on it, but it's okay, because we're not gonna squish it across there. We're just gonna let it dry. Uh, all right, and then last one here. The other tip is if you um, are getting gluey fingers, that is your cue to go and wash your hands. So don't think, oh, I'll just do a little bit more. Just go wash your hands, it's not a big deal. <laughs> um, you don't wanna transfer glue onto that space in there, um, either on the front or the back. So you wanna keep your window sheet really clean. All right, so there is our strip basis. Um, now, I'm gonna pick this up really gently. I would encourage you to not move it, but I want the paper from underneath. Um, and you'll see that I've got sort of the edges not finished there, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and clip those um, when they're ready. So, all right, so I've got here one that has been sitting for the last 10 minutes or so. And this one, um, I can handle a little more and it's uh, not gonna move. And so I'm gonna flip it to the back side because that is definitely the easiest for me to uh, see what I'm doing and get straight lines. And I'm just gonna clip down the side here. Try to keep your fingers off the window sheet as much as possible because you don't wanna leave fingerprints. Um, they just look a little bit messy. And I'm not gonna worry too much. I went over the bottom of my window sheet at the bottom. That doesn't matter. I don't actually need a a square for this, so it's just kind of cute that it's just a little longer. All right, so save your extra scraps because you're gonna wanna make a bunch of these. And our next technique, our next part of this is going to be to do our die cutting. So I have my stylish shapes dies, which are always on the verge of um, being sold out. They're low inventory again, but that is because they're absolutely amazing. Um, they are a staple die that I use all the time. And so um, I, oops, sorry, wrong way. Uh, they're staple die that I use all the time, and so I highly recommend adding them to your collection if you don't have them already. So I'm gonna bring in my die cut machine here, and you can see my habit of just leaving my glue sideways so much safer um, and be ready for me to use again. Uh, get some extra paper off of here. Um, bonus points if you can identify what die that came from. Uh, anyway. Or if you're an Anne McCaffrey fan, I always think they look like threads from Pern. So, all right, that's my my book reference there. Okay, so I have my circle here, um, which is set up in the middle of our paper. And when I do this die cutting, um, know that window sheets are quite a bit thicker than a lot of the materials that we use. So um, you want to give yourself the best chance of, like a weird hand there, um, the best chance of getting that um, cut all the way through. And so I am, I can see, cranking this back and forth. Um, and I would honestly uh, say 10 times. So just, just give it the best chance of getting cut because it is going to um, have to work through your cardstock and through the window sheet. 
And the great thing about Stylish Shapes is that it gives you that um, dotted texture around the edge on both sides of your paper. Because remember I said um, with this technique, you're gonna wanna make two cards, not one. Um, so you're gonna see why here in a second. So let's get this out of the way. And I have my um, paper here ready to go. So let's take a look at what happens here. Um, I'm gonna pull my die away and you can see um, that it is really nicely, cleanly die cut. Um, it is cut all the way through on the back. These things are incredible. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and pop it out. So as I work around, I'm actually gonna use my fingernail and I'm gonna finish that cut. The window sheet doesn't always wanna run straight through. So I'm gonna finish that cut just by pressing and twisting just a little bit on that cut line. And usually it goes pretty well. Sometimes I have to do a little tiny bit with my scissors, my paper snips. Um, so you don't wanna force it. If it really doesn't seem cut, then go ahead and use your scissors. But that worked out um, all the way around. Okay, so now we have this fun floating strip piece on a window sheet and this fun background, which we are not gonna waste, all right? Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, look at our card pieces. So when I have something this busy and fun, I really like to back it on something relatively simple. And so I have uh, my card stock, which I guess I picked up and put away. Um, that's funny. Okay, so I have two card bases for this and I have two um, card layers for this. So pull those out. And we're going to um, go ahead and layer some pieces here. But, you know, we haven't done our stamping yet. So let's do our stamping um, as we are getting started here. So I just have some um, couple pieces of basic white cardstock. And I know I love my Memento black pad. Um, I'm going to use basic gray classic pad for this, which is also a good choice for um, doing your coloring, your, pre your stamping to color with Stampin' Blends. Let's zoom in again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp all the pieces that I need for both of my cards. I need two bowls of guacamole. I need um, the chips. And I need, oh, those are pretty close together, uh, a sombrero. And I need the cactus. Where's my cactus friend? All right, so one of the things that's fun about this stamp set is that you can use um, the pieces by themselves or you can use the pieces and give them all little faces. Uh, so that is always a fun addition to these. So we're gonna go ahead and color with our Stampin' Blends markers and we're going to cut these out. So I find it easiest to color before I cut. Um, I don't know, are you guys cut before color people? I find it easiest to color first just because then they're not moving. So with our pieces here, now this is another step that you might find you wanna wait a little bit on. If you're getting bleeding when you color across here, you shouldn't. Um, the You're gonna to want to um, make sure that you're using uh, your basic white cardstock, which is really high quality, and um, the Stampin' Up um, classic pad for this so that you can go across it with your blends. So if, if, if it's bleeding, just give it a couple extra seconds uh, to solidify. With Stampin' Blends markers, I like to do my light color first. And think about this, if you have trouble kind of with the concept of Stampin' Blends, um, just think about it like watercolor, except know that the solvent, the thing that carries the color isn't water, it's alcohol. Um, and so basically that first step is to kind of set the paper up. Um, that light step is gonna saturate the paper a little bit so that your colors flow together instead of like sticking. Um, and the first light color uh, for this poppy parade, I'm gonna go ahead and put on here. Sometimes when you get a new set of Stampin' Blends markers, they are extremely juicy. Um, my poppy parade uh, markers are extremely juicy. So I'm gonna try to stay just inside the lines and not get a lot of liquid on there. And if you think about it, the more liquid you put in paper, um, the more it's going to bleed. So I'm gonna try and keep my color um, a little bit away from that line so that if I get a little bleeding, it's not gonna go too far um, afield there. All right, so first step, lay down the light color. Second step, add the dark 
to shadow, third step, blend at the intersection um, between those two to soften that line, okay? See how that works? So there we have our fun um, blended bowls. Uh, same with the cactus. I'm gonna go ahead and color here. Um, remember to use kind of long strokes because they're gonna show just a little bit in your project. And I'm gonna color here um, on his little arms. And then I'm gonna go back with my dark to add some shading. So here maybe like kind of along the sides here. You can see how that makes it just look a little interesting. And then a little bit there at his, uh, his armpits <laughs> where a shadow would be. And then just a little bit um, there to blend those intersections, okay? Uh, we're gonna do his hat. We're not gonna worry too much about shading dark and light on his hat because it's really just not gonna show very much. <laughs> There's such a small space there, so. Um, Stampin' Blend markers, if you haven't used them before, they come in pairs, uh, a light and a dark. And um, my favorite uh, tip for this is to just go ahead and give them a try. Um, my next tip for them is to please, it's a plea, please um, be aware that we've been trained our whole lives to um, use markers that are round. These markers have a square barrel, there you can see on the end. Um, they are not meant to be twisted at the cap. Our whole lives, every marker we've used has been um, round. And so we have this ten tendency to wanna to twist caps off. Don't twist these. Um, there are some seams here in the barrel and if you twist, you're gonna break these. So just know that all you wanna do is pull straight off um, with your caps so that you keep your markers in healthy shape, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna dot some dark color there uh, with my dark, uh, Daffodil Delight, and then go ahead and color that. All right, so now we have our cute chips and our guacamole bowls and our um, cactus. We need, of course, to add some faces to these because uh, they're cute with faces. These are tiny, tiny stamps, especially for this little winking bowl one. So you wanna make sure you don't over stamp um, and squish out, that, uh, squish out that design there, so, okay. All right, are you guys Stampin' Blends fans, fanatics? Uh, the last thing we're gonna do is fussy cut these. And rest assured, I'm only gonna fussy cut one just for the example of it. Um, I like to keep my scissors still and use my free hand to, uh, use my free hand to um, turn the paper for best control. How's everybody's fussy cutting coming? You guys been practicing? <laughs> I know for a while we were talking about practicing our fussy cutting. All right, so then I'm gonna bring in our pieces that I have pre-fussy cut, and we are going to get ready to assemble our cards. So let's zoom out just a second here to give us a little more space. And we need all those pieces though, and we're gonna bring in our cards. All right, so when you're using thick white cardstock, you always want to pre-score it down the center. Um, on one side, there will be a pimple, uh, a part that pops up. On the other side, there will be a dimple, a little divot. And I don't think you can see it very well. Here you can see it well on this one. See the, the dimple on that side and the pop-up pimple on that side? Here's how I remember which way to fold. You, I, um, you want to hide your pimples and show your dimples. Show your dimples, hide your pimples. So the pimple goes on the inside. We're gonna hide it in the card. The dimple goes on the outside. And part the reason that you're doing it that direction has to do with breaking the cardstock fibers when you do your scoring. So show your dimples, hide your pimples. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna be our card base, but you know me, um, I always like to layer for extra um, visual interest. So we're gonna have a layer here. The other trick um, for layering, the reason you're gonna do it is that you want to, um, you want to, if you want to color on this with your Stampin' Blends, know that Stampin' Blends markers are going to saturate your paper. So you'll have to add an extra layer to do that. So our first card here, um, we're going to use our circle like this. We're going to add our greeting down here and I'm going to bring in our paper here. Oh, we got comments on that. Sue says, love the blend, had to order more. Yes, you gotta fill in. A great way to start with blends is to, I, I usually use them on flowers. So have a green and then a blossom color and maybe like a shadow color, a background color. 
Um, if you're trying to get started and like you want all of them, but you can't decide which one, um, that's my strategy. Uh, Kelly says she's getting used to fussy cutting. Woohoo! And Alina, I'm glad you like the markers too. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp here your nacho average friend uh, down here at the bottom. So this is sort of a clean look card. We're going to have some um, focal point in the center with our greeting down here to set it aside. And I'm getting tired of holding this card. So I'm just going to move the, the piece away so that I can bring out my pads here. Um, we're going to go ahead and use our uh, ink pads here to match. So I've got Daffodil Delight and Parakeet Party. And I'm going to use this as a guide. I'm going to go ahead and stamp around, do some twisting there, um, the edges, and then gasp and alarm. I'm just going to go from a light to a darker pad without changing, uh, without cleaning my stamp. It'll be okay. This is going to, it's going to cover it up. No one will be able to tell they're related colors. All right. So now um, I would go ahead and wash that. And we have our pieces now to layer on here. So Nacho Average Friend clearly needs some nacho chips and uh, a cute little bowl of guacamole. Now I'm gonna layer these like this. So I'm gonna go back and just do a teeny bit tighter fussy cutting on this part so that I don't have so much white space between. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second for the inside of our card. All right, so here are, but I better zoom in because these are tiny pieces. Um, there are our pieces. And now we're going to um, go ahead and put them together. So I'm going to use a Stampin' Dimensional. You guys know how much I love to use these to make my life easy. I'm going to pinch these two pieces so that they're together where I want them. And then just use a dimensional right there at the intersection to hold them together. I'll add one more for kicks there. And then I'm going to place this here um, towards the center of our circle. Now this, to get our floating strip technique, is going to um, sit on the card here, but I'm gonna do some strips for this. Um, these are the uh, foam adhesive strips. They are on the Stampin' Dimensionals page in the book, and um, they are, come in a long sheet. They're like this long. Uh, I have mine trimmed down from a previous project. So I'm going to um, go ahead and pull this off. It's basically Stampin' Dimensionals in a strip form. And so if you don't have edge pieces saved, this is a great way to go. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and pop one here underneath um, each of these sort of top and bottom critical, oops, I guess it's a little too long still, top and bottom critical uh, elements here. Let's see, I get that, put that little piece in the garbage can, otherwise I'll be wearing it later today, I'm quite certain. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop this on our card here, okay? So now we have that fun floating strip technique card um, with that really fun element. So let's go ahead and stick this down to our card base. So I love putting these layers, color on color layers, especially um, with the white. When you want to um, have a card that looks really special, um, but you don't want to clutter it up with a lot of color um, or a lot of uh, like repeated color layers. We just want it to be clean. So there is our piece there. And I know I could put bling on this, but I'm not going to um, because we have that fun window there that is sort of given our sparkle. All right, we're gonna do something for the inside of this card. Now remember I said, um, if you go ahead and uh, color on these with Stampin' Blends, it's gonna go through. So I can't do that because I'm not gonna cover up the back of our card. So what I can do instead is take our sweet little um, guy here and the hat, and you'll notice that I trimmed really, really close on, I know that's not focused very well. I trimmed really, really close on the bottom of his sombrero because I didn't want a big white line there. I wanted it to um, kind of be like one piece. So you could trim exactly on the line too if you wanted. Um, I'm just a fan of the look with the white line. So it is definitely user preference. So again, use your um, dimensional to pop one there at the intersection so you don't have to Work hard to attach these pieces and he is going to just go down there at the bottom of our card. So uh, we have your nacho average friend and the little guy in the bottom. But we can't waste this. Look at how cute this piece is. So clearly this piece needs to be another cute card. 
So let's bring in another sheet. So this is gonna layer here. We're just going with the same basic uh, formula, except this time we're gonna stamp inside our circle. And because we're adding a layer, we can uh, color on this. So for this one, I think we need to use the holy guacamole um, stamp because that is one of my favorite parts of Taco Fiesta. So I've got holy guacamole, it's your birthday. And then to go with our guacamole, we need chips, but I don't really wanna cut out anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the chips and we'll color those in a second. Um, remember I said sometimes it's good to just let them settle, let that ink dry a tiny bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop some confetti there on the side. So it's kind of a fun confetti, it sticks into the hole, but then you can also kind of see it through these sides. All right, and then remember our coloring here, first step, add a layer of base color. Second step, add some dots uh, or the highlight lines in the dark color. Third step, uh, pop some coloring at the intersection there. I like the word intersection, don't I? Sounds fancy for stamping. Um, all right, and remember uh, square barrels only um, open and close straight, no twisting, no twisty. <laughs> All right, then we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna use um, this strip. And I know from experience that these are just a teeny bit too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip off a little bit. Maybe I'll leave this here on my sheet. And I'm gonna pop um, just kind of one towards the top and one at the bottom. And conveniently we have, oops, Conveniently, we have these long strip spaces. Um, I honestly don't worry about putting in the middle. If you wanted to, you could use those little bits and you could pop them in the middle, but I think the window sheets are quite sturdy, um, so I actually don't worry about uh, keeping more dimensionals in the middle. So you could um, put a line on every line if you really wanted to. Uh, don't let me stop you, that's for sure. And then we're just gonna frame our holy guacamole here and then we're gonna add our um, little guacamole bowl here um, on the side. So I'm gonna pop the dimensional, I think, on here uh, so that I can attach this. Um, if I put it out here, it would end up overlapping and then it would press it down and then it wouldn't be dimensional anymore. So I think this is the best solution. So there we have our cute holy guacamole. And then we're gonna flip this and you can see it's a good thing we layered our card. Um, put this on the back. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, tacos and uh, Mexican food are hugely popular in our house. Um, this would be a really fun special occasion card for anyone who is a fan of tacos and so forth. Um, and uh, you know, then there's always like the guacamole question, right? Like, what do you put in your guacamole? Is it just avocado? and salt and a little lime? Or does your guacamole have to have diced onion in it and all the cilantro and all the accoutrements? So, um, you know, I uh, you, can, you can leave your favorite guacamole recipe here. Maybe I'll give it a try, but honestly, I am a, um, I am a plain guacamole fan. Avocado, a little salt, some lime juice, that is my go-to. So, I don't know. Uh, I realize that that's a, a, a place of great contention, the, the true guacamole recipe. So, all right, let me bring you guys back here. Um, so that is us for Thursday. Uh, uh -huh, Kathy says, thank you. You are spectacular. I know, I love it. And you're welcome for zooming in. Yeah, if you guys ever want me to zoom for things, if you're watching live, um, if you're watching later, it's harder to ask. Um, but if you're watching live, like speak up in the comments. Usually I keep an eye on them and um, can work on uh, accommodating as much as possible. And so, yeah, glad you guys like the tacos and the taco fiesta. I feel like I should have tacos for lunch today. Anyway, um, I will uh, actually not be here next week. It is um, spring break for us, so I will not have live videos, but I will have some spring break rewind videos and projects for you. Um, so, uh, be sure to tune in next week for those. I'll have projects shared every day um, that you will be excited to see and probably ones because um, there are months and months ago uh, that you'll think, oh yeah, I remember I saw that video and I forgot that I wanted to try it. So um, as we're getting towards the end of the uh, catalog, 
um, both catalogs, um, this would be a great chance to go back and think about things that you might want from here. Um, there are several really great projects uh, and products that will be retiring soon. So that retiring list I think comes out on probably on March 29th because that's when demonstrators get to see the digital version of the new catalog. If you are thinking, what demonstrators get that early, you too can get it early. Um, there's a link in the video description for supplies for today's project, as well as for information about joining my Loven uh, Stampfuls demonstrator team. And then you would get early access to things too. So, um, all right. Uh, with the puns in the comments, you guys are so funny. Margie says, let's talk about your cute cards. <laughs> I love that. And uh, let's see. Let's see, Roxanne, oh, Roxanne says she's allergic to avocado. Um, sorry, Roxanne. So the nice thing is that this avocado contains no avocado, so you can use as much of it as you want and you'll be just fine. Yeah, I have another friend who's allergic to avocado. I don't think that one's too uncommon. Um, so probably a salsa fan then, not a, uh, not a um, guacamole fan, but that, that's okay too, so. All right, uh, I think that that covers us for today. So anyway, um, make sure you tune in next week for um, Projects Every Day at 9.30 a.m. Central Time. And uh, just know that I'll read your comments later. Um, I won't be on at the exact time next week. Uh, I think that covers us. Hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. I um, will look forward to hearing from you and uh, to being back the following week with more projects, um, including ones for our March uh, Loven Samples tutorials, which focus on enjoy the journey and color. Although, I mean, let's face it, I am a color fan pretty much all the time. So, uh, but we're going to focus on that enjoy the journey suite and the enjoy, um, uh, oh gosh, something destinations, I think is the name of the stamp set, but it's in there. All right. Have a great day, guys. Happy pre-Friday and we will talk to you soon. Happy stamping.